Hi, and welcome to my video series on installing and working with Hadoop. Um, this video series is meant for people that have a theoretical understanding of what Hadoop is, but don't know how to get started. Hence, I won't delve into what the different parts of the Hadoop ecosystem are and um, how they interact with each other. Um, in this video series, we will build a single node cluster on a Linux machine. However, I don't assume that you have had any prior exposure to Linux. Of course, this video is not meant as a full-blown Linux tutorial, but I hope to show you enough to get started. So Hadoop is meant to run on Linux machines. Um, while there are also binaries for Windows, you should make sure to install it on a cluster of Linux machines. However, most people are more familiar with Windows, so I assume that you have heard of Linux but are a Windows user. So what is Linux? Linux is a free operating system that has been around since the early 90s. Um, it is built on open source uh, principles and dominates the server OS market. In fact, most of the internet today runs on Linux since most web servers um, actually run Linux. Um, however, notice that there is not the Linux operating system. Uh, Linux is a tiny kernel of programs that contains the bare necessities. Linux distributions are the actual operating systems. These distributions pack the Linux kernel with a bunch of additional software. Every Linux distribution has its pros and cons, and most uh, Linux users have their favorite. Also, most Linux users will tell you what their favorite distribution is, whether you have asked them or not. So for this video, we are going to use Debian. Debian is one of the oldest Linux distributions that are still actively developed. Its major strength is also its major weakness. Debian is known to be very stable. However, this stability is achieved by including not the most up-to-date software. Um, in other words, Debian likes to play it safe when it comes to updates. Um, if you are a seasoned uh, Linux user, you can skip this part and go straight to installing Hadoop on a Linux machine. Now, in a production setting, um, uh, you would have a dedicated server on which you would install Debian. Of course, we're not going to buy a large server for setting up a sandbox environment. There are two ways we can get a Linux machine at barely or basically no cost. Um, you could either install Debian on your machine um, or we could create a virtual machine. And a virtual machine allows you to create a computer inside your computer. We are going to go for this approach since we can easily delete the virtual machine if not needed any longer. Um, in order to create a virtual machine, we need software to do so. For this, I would advise you to install VMware Workstation Player. Now, if you actually want to install VMware Workstation Player, it's actually pretty simple. Just go to vmware.com, then click Downloads, Free Product Downloads, and the Workstation Player. This is the version for personal use, and it's free. And then over there, you can see the download link. Just download download it and install it on your computer. Now, I have already done that, so um, I won't do it now. Okay, so if you've installed it, you can just navigate to the folder. So for me, it's C, Programs, VMware, VMware Player, and then you will see there's a VMware pl vmplayer.exe. Now, I've pinned that to my taskbar. I would advise you to do the same. You can open it up. So VMware player will open up. And yes, you can see there's uh, one Debian image over there, one um, virtual machine, which I installed for personal use. Um, okay, next we gotta download Debian. And this is actually pretty simple. We just open up a Internet Explorer and say go to debian.org. Now, unfortunately, my site is localized to German, but there should be a link that says something about getting Debian, so right over there, and it should say something about getting an installation image. You can click on that link. Now, down there, you see Debian for all sorts of CPU architecture. If you're using a normal PC, I am very certain that your architecture is AMD64. Uh, click on it, and a download should start, so it's actually pretty small, like 300, 49 megabyte, just wait for it to finish. Now the download is finished and we can set up our virtual machine. Now I created a folder in my personal workspace called virtual machines. And here you can see that I have two folders, images, 
where I keep all the image, image files of different Linux distributions and Debian, uh, which is an actual virtual machine I created for private usage. So let's put the Debian image into images. So downloads, there you can see Debian 10.60. This is the image we just downloaded. Cut it, go to images and paste it. And there it is. Okay, we are good to go. Let's bring up VMware player. So let's close this down. Let's open this up. Now, since you haven't created any virtual machines on your computer, there will only be home in your VMware player. Let's create a new virtual machine. Click create new virtual machine. And make sure you click, I will install the operating system later. We only want to create the virtual machine first. Then click next. Now our guest operating system is Linux and we choose version, De uh, De version Debian 10.x since it's Debian 10. All right, now we need to name our virtual machine. Let's call it Hadoop Sandbox. All right. Um, next, we need to specify where to save the virtual machine on our Windows computer. Again, note that I have created a folder for my virtual machines. I want to create it in that folder. So browse and we say personal workspace, virtual machines, and okay. Um, wait, uh, yeah, that's okay. Then backslash and let's call that Hadoop Sandbox. Okay, then click next. Um, here VMware wants to know how much disk space we would like to allocate to our new Linux virtual machine. Let's select 30 gigabytes, which should be enough to get started. Um, also like to store the virtual disk as a single file. Okay. Uh, here it lists some hardware specifications. However, we want to customize it. So click customize hardware. Notice uh, that it will use the resources of your existing machine. Since we are still running Windows besides our virtual machine, we don't want to give too much resources to our virtual machine. Hence, I'll give eight gigabytes of memory, which is about half of what I have. So or exactly half of what I have. So eight gigabytes of memory. Next, we want to allocate CPU power. So let's give it two cores. Um, remember that we want to install Debian. Uh, whenever you install a new operating system, you would insert some bootable device to your computer that contains the image of the operating system, right? So we need to do the same here. So select CD DVD and then select use ISO image file. He must choose the path to your Debian image. So it's Debian 10.60, gonna use that. Um, this way our virtual machine will act as if it has an installation CD of Debian in its CD DVD reader. Um, we also want to use graphical, a graphical user interface on that machine. So let's select display and uh, let's say accelerate 3D graphics and let's give it a gigabyte over there. Now this will allow the virtual machine to use some of our GPU's processing power. All right, so that was quite a lot, but we are done configuring our system. Hit close and select finish. Great, we are ready and we can fire up our virtual machine. Just double click on your virtual machine's name. So a little window sh should open up and you should be greeted with an installation menu. Um, if there's an error, um, it's either because virtualization is not enabled on your computer or you made some mistakes configuring the, v uh, the virtual machine. If so, enable virtual virtualization uh, and or check that your PC has enough power to create a virtual machine with the specified hardware you chose. Okay, so let's jump straight into the graphical installer. So I'm gonna hit enter. Now it's loading. So um, select your geography. Now I will select um, English and the United States. 
uh, instead of Germany. So Debian will be in English. Else my Debian would be in German, but I want you to be able to follow along. However, I will choose a German keyboard, of course. So I chose English, United States, and now I'm gonna use a German keyboard. Continue. Right? All right, um, Debian is okay as a host name. We can leave, also we can leave the domain name, which is over there, um, blank. So hit continue twice. Um, next, we need to enter a root password for the system. Uh, choose one, but don't forget it. Uh, we will need it in the future. Um, root is a super user who can basically do everything on your system. So I'm gonna choose a password and verify it. All right, let's continue. Um, next, you could insert your name. So I'm gonna insert my name and you can choose a username for your um, personal account. So in, insert your name and a username for your personal account. And also remember the name of that username. We will need it later. All right, continue. Now we need to um, enter a password for this personal account. So enter another password for the personal account. So remember, the first password we chose was for the root account, the account who can basically do everything. And this password is for your personal account. All right. Um, I don't really care about the time zone. My PC is not really in the United States, so I'm just gonna select Eastern. Um, It's loading. So in order to make the installation process as simple as possible, let's use guided partitioning and use entire disk. Then we're gonna choose this disk over there. So remember we said, okay, give it 30 gigabytes of um, um, space. So there it is, 32 gigabytes, continue. And all files in one partition, that's okay. And Say continue. Yes, we want to write to disk. All right. So again, the default values are okay. Also um, notice that we are running on a virtual machine. So this is not really gonna partition your um, disk, right? So it's just gonna partition the virtual disk that was created for your virtual machine, which is basically just a single file on your Windows machine. Now, um, after all this, Debian will start installing on the machine. And this is done. No, we don't want to scan another DVD. Um, next, we need to choose a mirror for the software repository. You must choose whatever is nearest to you. I will select Germany. You can select um, um, whatever is uh, fitting uh, for your needs. So if you're not living in Germany, I would just suggest that you choose a mirror close to you. So Germany. Um, also, uh, Debian, the, the default Debian uh, archive mirror is okay. So we just say continue. And we don't want to give a uh, proxy, so continue. Now it's configuring the package manager. Uh, also, it's downloading and installing a new software. Okay, that is done. No, we don't want to send automated reports. Next, we can choose some additional software to install. First, we want to select a desktop environment. A desktop environment is basically how your graphical user interface will look like. You can choose not to install any desktop environment at all, which will be equal to basically just a naked terminal. However, we want to do that. I personally like uh, KDE and XFCE. However, XFCE uses very little resources, so let's take that. So make sure you mark that. Um, we don't want a print server. However, we do want SSH. Uh, make sure you select that. We will need that. Uh, you can also keep the standard system utilities. So continue. Um, so depending on your internet connection, this might take a while. So I will definitely forward the video. 
So the installation is done. Um, I guess I want to install a group which will take care of booting into Debian. Um, here we need to select the device to install the bootloader. Here you can select dev SDA, which is our single drive. Finally, the installation is complete. The system will reboot and you will be greeted with a booting option. So continue, now it should reboot, reboot, sorry. So select Debian, GNU Linux. Now it's booting, okay. Just recently we created our personal account. Type in your username and password. You have selected and hit enter. So mine was Joshua and a password I provided. Hit enter and there you are. If you made it this far, congratulations, you've installed your first Linux distribution. Now, what I love about Linux is the fact that it is extremely configurable and it is much less resource greedy than Windows. Now, personally, I would ditch Windows completely and use Linux for my personal computer. However, the only thing that is keeping me from doing that is my Steam library. Now, if you're looking for a good distribution for personal use, I advise you to test uh, Manjaro Linux. Okay, so here you can see your desktop. Let's use the default config. So default config, and let's click on applications and then on the settings and display. So settings and display, there you are. Uh, we can increase the resolution to actually see stuff. So click on resolution and I will choose, let's say, yep, that looks pretty good. So apply and it's much bigger now. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, close. Okay, so note that since we installed Debian on a virtual machine, it doesn't really know what kind of display I have. Hence, there's no um, 1080p resolution. Also, the resolution will go back to the smallest one if we reboot the computer. And that wouldn't happen, happen if we did a real install on our machine. So not on a virtual machine, but a real install on our machine. In order to work properly, we need to install some additional drivers. And to do so, open up a terminal and do as I do. So open up a terminal, click down there. So this will bring up the terminal. Now enter su, so zoo. Now enter the password for the root user. So not for your personal account, but the password for the root user, because we will log in as the root user. So I will type in the password. Now I am logged in as root and type in the following. apt install open hyphen vm hyphen tools. Hit enter and confirm that. Okay, so what did we do? First, we log in as admin or root using the root password. Then we instruct the system to install the open VM tools. This will make working with a virtual machine much more um, comfortable. Now, if we want to change the size of our window, the resolution will change as well. So for example, if I say open in full screen mode, you will see that the resolution um, will be in 1080p. Now that looks much better, doesn't it? So let's get that out of the way. Um, notice how we had to log in as admin. We don't want to do that um, to execute just a, a single command every time. For this, we need to add our personal account to the sudo group. Now, I shouldn't have closed down the terminal. So what you want to do is um, log in as root one last time. So type in su, type in the root password. So now we're logged in as root and execute the following command. So you say sudo add user. Now you need to add your username. So mine is Joshua, but yours is probably different. And then say sudo, hit enter, All right? 
So this tells the sudo program to add Joshua to the sudo uh, group. Of course, you should use the username you created during installation. The sudo program allows us to execute a single command as root. Hence, it will log in as root, execute the command, and then log out again. Um, for this to work, all we need to do uh, is to add sudo in front of a command. However, first we need to log out and log in again for the um, changes to take effect. So log out. So we're going to say uh, log out. It's logging out. And let's log in again. So now the changes, whoop, it changed the resolution. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so we've made sure that we can use the sudo command, which will execute commands as um, the root user. So for example, I can instruct Debian to update our package repository, which I can only do as root. So open up a terminal and enter sudo apt update. Uh, oh, yeah, sudo, not sudo, sorry. Uh, now I need to enter my personal password. So my personal password, not the uh, sudo password, uh, the root password, sorry. And the command was executed. So this will save us from logging in and logging out as a root in the future. So if you want to run a command like apt update, for which you know you, you have to um, uh, be the root user, you can just put sudo in front of it. And then you can just in, um, insert your personal password. You don't have to know the root password. Great. So now to be honest, I think the default X, uh, FCE desktop looks very unappealing. If you want, you could customize how Debian looks in very, very great detail and create amazing desktops. However, since we want to create a server, I will keep the default look. Um, notice that the entire system needs only about 400 megabytes to run. So you could run Debian on very old hardware and still get the job done. Uh, since I assume that you had no prior exposure to Linux, I will teach you some of the very basic stuff. Uh, notice, however, that this is definitely not a Linux crash course. If you want to make the most out of my videos, go ahead and take a look at some Linux tutorials. I firmly believe that you need to understand Linux in order to understand Hadoop. Um, when you see um, a, um, or what you see is a desktop environment. So what you see over here is a desktop environment. More specifically, you see the XFCE desktop environment. However, the desktop environment is just another piece of software on your Linux machine. If you would have wanted to, you could have abstained entirely from installing a um, desktop environment. For servers, this is also the norm. In a production situation, I would have not installed the desktop environment. Now, the obvious next question is, then how do I interact with the operating system? And the answer to that is the terminal. We will spend most of the time at the terminal. Um, in fact, you've already used it. So let's open right there. Now, just to be um, uh, sure again, just down there, it's a terminal. You can just click on it and it will open up the terminal. This will bring up the terminal. Um, in times before Windows and Mac OS, uh, Mac OS um, this was actually the standard way to interact with your operating system. Um, and it would still be the way you would do it if you would have not installed a desktop environment. All you would have is this terminal. So it would be just this without any fancy windows and stuff like that. So let's put that down. However, this is all we actually need. You type in some command and you get back a result. For example, we could type in the following command and hit enter. So. You could say echo, hello world, hit enter. You get back whatever you put inside the quotation marks. So the echo command will basically just give you back whatever you put inside the quotation marks. Um, echo is the command and hello world is the argument. What we're using right now is the bash shell. Bash stands for born again shell. It is responsible for taking our commands 
and it is forwarding it to the system. I think the major difference between Windows and Linux is the way most software is installed and maintained. Um, by the way, ironically, Hadoop and Spark will be an exception. However, in Linux, you wouldn't typically download some binary file and install the software. Every Linux distribution has a package manager, which is responsible for installing software. For example, I like the tool NeoFetch, which pretty prints your system information. You can install software by using the apt command. apt is Debian's package manager. Next, we need to provide two arguments. Install and the name of the package that we want to install, so NeoFetch. However, only root can install new software. Hence, we need to put sudo in front of the command. So sudo, hit enter, type in your personal password, hit enter again, and confirm that you want to install NeoFetch. It's downloading and installing. And next we can actually use the command. So new fetch. And this will pre-print our system information. Now this looks pretty nice. Um, what I think is very neat is the fact that you can update all of your software with just one command. Okay, actually in my case it's two commands. But first let's update our package managers index. So we can say sudo apt update. That is done. Now let's update all of our software. So we can say sudo apt upgrade. Okay, now it might be that there are no update, updates to install, which is obvious because I just in, installed a very fresh and recent copy of Debian. Um, next, I would like to introduce you to another major difference to uh, Windows, the file system. Linux uses the Unix file system. If you enter the following command, you can get the current working directory. So if we enter pwd, so print working directory, we get the working directory. And there is a root directory, the forward slash, so this is the root directory. Inside the root directory is a folder called home. Oops, sorry. So there's a folder called home. And inside that folder is another folder called Joshua. That is where we currently are. So let's have a look what is inside that folder. So ls, enter, and this command will list all the files and folders in your current working directory. These are all folders. Let's create a text file. For this, we want to use the command line editor nano. Enter nano and the name, oh, nano, and the name of the file you would like to open or create. So if the file name doesn't exist, it will just create a file. So enter nano test.txt and let's say hello world, this is a test. And hit control X to exit, say yes and enter. Okay, um, if you check for the current directory's content, you will see that file. So hit ls again, and there it is. Now we can take a look at that file by typing cat test.txt. By the way, if you don't want to type all the commands or the entire command or the entire argument, you can say just ts, ts for example, and then hit tap, and that will complete the command. So hit enter. And there it is. Hello world, this is a test. The cat command will print the file content to the screen. Um, do you notice the small tilde over there? So this curly operator right over there. Um, this tells you your current, um, you are in your current uh, working directory. So the tilde is a shortcut for your home directory. Every user has his own home directory. Let's navigate into the downloads folder inside your home directory. So CD for change directory and downloads. Now you can see that you are inside the downloads folder inside your home directory. So right over there. Um, you can always go back to your home directory by typing CD and then the curly operator, the, there you are. 
Notice that everything below your home directory is used by Linux and or other users. You should know what you are doing when you are there. So that was a very short introduction to Linux. Again, if you want to make the most out of my videos, I suggest you watch some short Linux intros. Um, if you made it this far, you can say that you have a running Linux distribution. If you want, you could uh, now shut down Debian and bring it back on whenever you are ready. So I will do just that, shut down, and your VM or virtual machine will also shut down.